dried this. I like how it looks and now I think I will go into adding some of the darker elements to the flower and there's not much that I want to add really just a tiny bit just like that and I think I'm done here um, I will leave that so the flower is finished face needs work and then this needs as well so at the minute I find that two colors are too strong here so this is something I would take into the uh, painting later I would think about that and kind of um, consider it so that I don't repeat the same sort of, you know, creative mistake. And um, at this point, really, I would love to slap on some acrylic paint if I don't like this. Or um, like oil sticks. Um, so let's see, what would I do now? Okay, I think, as always, what I do, if there's a colour that's too dark... Um, or it's clashing a little bit, I would like to bring some lightness to it. And what I'm going to do is look through some lighter options, lighter colors. So I was just thinking I could also add some gold. I could try and adding a gold or like a pale color here. Let's see, I think I'll go with the pale color first. I want to maintain some aspects of this pink, but just not to have as much of it. This is a great color to go straight out of the tube and it's the Titan Mars Pale. So typically I like to use a spatula. Now what do I do to prevent it from looking like you're covering up something you're not happy with is to pull it out a bit. Don't let it looked like you're just covering a small area and then you can see the color from all aspects, if that makes sense. What I like to do is leaving a little bit of the color coming out of this swatch and just sort of pulling it out a bit. And then, you know, if you cover something up, you can always go back and add a bit more. So for instance, here, that is how I like things to be, a bit more broken up, not just a straight swatch of paint, but just making it look like it was meant to be like that. Okay, I'm going to add a bit of this uh, remaining paint on the cheek and we'll create like a blush effect there. Again, before I resume, this acrylic paint has to be completely dry. So far, I am loving the botanical, I'm loving the abstract. The abstract, I feel, doesn't have that much left to be finished. With the face, I always do my faces with a lot more detail and I love um, that sort of abstract look to it. So I'm trying to find a way to make it uh, more sort of abstract, less detailed, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm just going to add a bit more color to her lip. It might be an idea just to let it bleed a bit, bleed out for that extra bit of uh, abstractness, like it's an accident but it's <laughs> it was a uh, meant to be accident so with the eyes now let's think how am I going to add enough detail for it to be an eye without overdoing things so at this point another watercolor pencil would be quite good but hmm I'd like to add some of this red somewhere here as well and just pull it out like so. 
and then this pastel I quite like it so I think I'm just going to try and smudge it into the acrylic paint just add a bit of extra something here and for this I hmm let's see just a bit of a detail I think would be okay the focus should be more on this side so I want this kind of this side to be a bit more um, relaxed in a way so I'm just going to add a bit more water to this as well just to soften things add a bit more pizzazz to it I think that's about it. I think that's good now. Maybe actually there's such a strong line here which I quite like and then a broken up um, side here. So there's actually something to it which um, which I do like. So there's you know we can see those are eyes so we can see it's the mouth but things are almost pasted together and I really like this look. So I think I'll call it a day before I overdo things. I'm kind of tempted to add these marks here, just a few of them, just to create like a sprinkle of um, almost, what are they called, freckles? Tiniest little bits, like so. Again, trying to not overdo things. Um, that's it. That's as much as I'd go with it. Because then if I put too many, it will start to distract and you lose the focus on other things. In fact, I might just want to soften things down a little and wash them off because this is acrylic paint, so it would be good to just take some of them off. And I quite like what's happening here, just randomly. Sometimes with the dots, it um, can kind of look a little bit too coordinated. And now it's perfect. Okay, face is done. Now back to the abstract. So with the abstract, let's try and add some gold. Why not? Just that bit of fun element that you can do always. And look at that. Just that little bit already is adding so much. Now what I will try to do is not have it as big of a mark as the pink one underneath because we want it to be an accent and it's important to just keep it at that. Also rule of three I might consider just adding a little swatch like more of a smudge around this area so then we're just connecting it like so. Okay, now what to do with this area? I might just smudge it a bit. Use my finger. That's it. Sometimes when tools are not enough, just use your finger. It's absolutely fine. So we're literally now coming to um, the end of this. And I think what it needs is contrast. So we have plenty of contrast here with the darkest color, my beloved dark indigo we have gentle contrast here because the botanical is a bit more uh, of a timid <laughs> more subtle and soft way of illustrating and then we have abstract here which has no detail is just paint uh, placed beautifully in my opinion so then we're going to add some contrast and I don't want to go into this color because we've taken it out so this will be the last color to add once things are completely dry while I was waiting for things to dry I have tried a couple of things on the side here so I found a pencil and really I need to look into whether there is um, a good version of this dark indigo in the Museum of Corral. If you watched the previous video where I've done these babies, uh, you may remember um, I matched some of the colors and 
they are a beautiful way of having opacity and also a bit of watercolor effect if you wanted to as a combo. So I like doing that and some pencils are really greatly matched and some are slightly different and not my favorites. But um, yeah, I'm quite curious now to look into dark indigo in the Museum Aquarelle version just to see if I can find such an intensity and then at this point what I would love to do is add it here and then just on a side just smudge it a little bit with, a, with some water just softening it which obviously I can't do it with luminance so what I've done is the other pencil that I have in a similar kind of color palette is the Payne's Grey so before going in here I did a little swatch on the side and you can do that to avoid you know adding something that you don't like to your work and then see how it looks with water. So in my opinion, this is a better um, option just because it's more, how shall I say, it's more punchier. It's got more character to it. And what I like to do is just layer, layer it slightly over here, just to bring the two colors together but this pencil doesn't work really well on acrylic paints. It would work better on here. So this is what I may do actually. So I may go into here then. Okay, in that case, I'm going to go over with a bit of this or leave it. I might just leave it like that. Yes, I'll leave it as it is and then go over here and you can see it's a lot more intense and it's what I was aiming for. So just a few bits of this paint or this mark making here. And I might repeat just a couple more throughout just to bring it in a bit and kind of make the shape go that way. It's a shame I can't get it to look like that. What you can do instead is get a marker, like an acrylic marker. I'll try to find that in a similar color. So I have a few options here. Nothing exactly like what I need. I've got a black, which I don't want to add black um, in this color palette here. I've got this sort of a, like a gray type of color, but it's, um, yeah, I'm not sure I want to go in there with it and then if I bring this color back let's see I might just I'm not sure but I'll go in with this color see if I like it yeah actually it's not too strong so it's not going to compete with the darker marks yet it's better color option so that works well and I'll leave it at that so that's actually maybe layering it slightly more over here, like so. So this exercise really helped me to combat the um, creative block because there's just so many gorgeous colors that my eye is drawn to and the marks that I made. It's all bringing me back to what I enjoy doing. And this is such a good way of kind of warming up. If you haven't done art for a while, if you, you know, just haven't been in touch with, um, with your creative side for a little bit, this is such a good exercise to do. So basically, Create a lovely color palette. Go through all of your art supplies. Think of what your favorite colors are. Swatch them out. They don't have to be in one medium. I've done it in pencils because I find that pencils are really easy um, to, you know, to keep and to work with when it comes to a lot of colors. You don't have to have like a big watercolor palette. You don't have to have all of your um, other art supplies out. And ready to go so with pencils it's easy because look I've got all these colors in a small place and I'm going to keep them in that uh, glass is <laughs> a cute one 
French Bulldog. Uh, for a while to keep myself inspired and going back to that color palette because I feel really comfortable with it. So from there then I've taken some inspiration from a book which is this one here. So I have taken inspiration from this artist here, Daniel Eugenie. Anyway, I won't try to pronounce the surname. It's a Swedish um, artist, illustrator, and particularly these two illustrations are the color palette that I got um, inspired by here from the dark minimal colors and then added them to my original illustration here and that brought me then to exploring the color palette myself so you see taking someone's work and being inspired by a few colors doesn't mean that you're going to copy the entire thing and work that way it just means that you're pulling out certain bits that are speaking out to you and that way you can move on and create your own thing by the way i highly recommend this book uh, to anyone who has interest in illustration even if you're already like a well-established illustrator i think this would be a great book um, to be inspired by the works of other super talented um illustrators so again if you haven't seen me talk about that process then i will link that video for you and so that is it so what i would do after this warm-up exercise is next time move on to actually creating the abstract painting on here so i will see you during that process thank you for watching and until next time.